Hello and welcome to our session at the week of VogTech. We're so excited to see so many of you here. Um, I'm Maren Diepel, the CEO of the Association for Learning Technology. And I have a wonderful co-presenter here today. Hello. Hi Maren, thanks. My name is Emma Proctorleg. I'm the project manager on the Amplify FA project working for Alt. Excellent. Thank you for saying hello, Emma, and hello to everybody who is joining us here. I'm really excited that we are first up um, on Monday, the first day of this week's event. Um, and there is a really big program that we're part of as well. So thank you all for making time to joining us in the session. Um, there is a lot to look forward to. Is there a particular session, Emma, that you're looking forward to during the week of Octech? Absolutely. So I'm really keen to go along to uh, tomorrow's session on the knowledge share where we've got one of the sessions being run by Lynn, who's been doing a piece of work for us. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, also on Thursday, I'm looking forward to the VogTech showcase. This is the first time um, that I'm going to be able to see a lot of the projects um, in person. So I'm really excited about that. But I have to say, I'm also quite excited about what we're sharing today, because today we're celebrating a launch of new research. So if you haven't come across Amplify FE before, don't worry, we are going to tell you all about it and give you a full introduction in the next half hour. And after that, we're going to invite you to join us for a conversation um, on Twitter with the hashtag Amplify FE. So at the end of the session, we'll tell you how to join in the conversation and hopefully we can have a really good dialogue about the new research. But now on to our um, big launch. And this is the first presentation, um, the first preview of findings from the 2022 Amplify FE Communities of Practice Sector Audit Report. And our focus for this particular part of the report is to look at communities of practice across the sector and think what's changed in FE and VogTech. Now, Amplify FE is in partnership with UFI VogTech Trust and the Association for Learning Technology. We are the leading professional body for learning technology in the UK, and we represent three and a half thousand members from across different sectors, including FE and vocational education. Amplify FE is a network of networks and we launched in October 2020 and already connect over 1,800 professionals. We work to really connect up the dots between different communities of practice, different interest groups, to try and provide stronger networking for everyone in the community, professionals, providers, and policymakers, to share knowledge and collaborate. And our sector audit is a key part of the work that we do. And each year we take a snapshot of what professional practice looks like across the sector. And I know Emma in a minute um, will come to you and I know you'll do a deeper dive. Um, but before we dive right into this year's data, I just wanted to highlight that as well as taking a general snapshot of the sector, which is our third one now, starting to provide some nice more longitudinal data, we're also this year having a specific focus on communities that promote inclusion, equality and diversity in the sector. We've looked at specific communities that support research, and we've also looked at communities that have a particular subject focus. So today is the first day where we're launching the report and showing you a preview of all the key findings. But subsequently, there'll be a lot more resources coming out, helping you to explore these different aspects of the sector and what's happening in different communities of practice. And now, Emma, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to hand over to you so you can dive in more to our findings. Thank you. Uh, so the first thing to tell you is that really that the audit has grown massively this year. So we've added in 146 communities, which is a huge number, far eclipsing what we started with. And that makes up um, groups that are from JISC and BIRA. Um, we've pulled in all of the alt special interest groups. So lots of individual um, tiny communities of practice as well. So 
all sorts are represented within this data set. And as we've um, experienced previously, not only do we add some, but we remove ones that have disappeared and they disappear for various reasons. So again, some of those are, are JISC um, groups, some from ETF in relation to their set groups. And then again, communities just uh, that are no longer being funded perhaps, and they therefore we're removing the, that data so that um, everything is giving you a, a clear up-to-date picture of what's happening within the sector. So I'm really pleased to say that there's actually 264 communities of practice within the audit. And you can see that that's, you know, more than 100% increase over the two years. So we're, we're really excited by how great a number we're reaching in terms of capturing and um, demonstrating what the sector is made up of. Mm -hmm. I think it's fascinating that, you know, this is the first time really across FE and vocational education that we're starting to get a picture, not only of what communities are out there, but also how they're changing over time. And um, fantastic to see that increase, which really helps provide a more complete picture of professional practice and communities of practice. As we mentioned, um, ALT is an independent professional body and an independent charity. So we're very excited and grateful um, that U of I are supporting this research and working in partnership with us to really provide independent reports for the sector um, where we can chart from an, our perspective and for our members and the wider community how things are changing. Um, there are a couple of key findings um, reports coming out as well. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to dive in inspired by today's highlights. Now, Emma, talking of highlights, um, and I know we've had a look at different aspects of how the communities are active, but where is this practice being shared? What did we actually audit? Uh, so we looked across a lot of um, social media platforms, mm -hmm. and I can report that um, as we found out previously, that Twitter remains the most popular platform. So there are 109 Twitter handles uh, that we've reviewed mm -hmm. and that communities are continuing to um, expand into different uh, social media platforms. So um, Instagram, for instance, has increased in numbers. We found that there's a massive increase in terms of um, mailing list use. We've got growth on the Facebook pages, and groups as well, so um, closed groups on Facebook. LinkedIn is popular as well. And this year, for the first time, we've had a group that is uh, using WhatsApp as their main um, platform, which I, th I find really interesting in terms of whether people are choosing to use kind of more personalized um, platforms or whether they're going for something like um, Slack or TikTok, mm -hmm. which you know, gives you a completely different audience. And um, again, for the first time this year, we found communities that have grown out specifically out of Instagram, which again, I find a, a really interesting way of people sharing. So it's not just kind of your traditional platforms and um, both Teams and Zoom are popular because mm -hmm. of the continued need to do um, online meetings. And actually that those, those aren't going away because it remains valuable to be able to connect with people easily. Absolutely, and that's one of the things we saw in 2020 in the first audit that we did, is that um, the use of, of Zoom and Teams um, as platforms, you know, it's very strongly linked, I think, to the emergency response. And it's interesting how much um, these are, you know, now stalwarts of kind of communities of practice online. Um, but talking of things that aren't changing and things that are remaining popular, <laughs> I know that we have some, um, some more maybe traditional forms of technology and communication that are continuing to be very popular. Absolutely. So, you know, mailing lists and email newsletters are not going away. Um, they're very kind of easy ways for people to share information with a wide um, group of people. 
And uh, within this, we looked at not just uh, mailing lists, but also those that are using GIST mail lists. So we found that they've, they have continued to increase as well. And so we've got a total of 34 now using GIST mail lists. Uh, the interesting thing around it, though, is that actually the subscriber numbers to some of those GIST mailing lists are reducing. So mm -hmm. although it is a popular platform that people are using, they, the numbers don't uh, remain. And obviously that I think re reflects how people are managing and dealing with digital communication. And if you're suffering from overload in your inbox, then you can completely understand why uh, mailing lists might be the first thing that you remove. Right, that's definitely something that we can all identify with, overload on inboxes and notifications. Um, but as you said, there's also um, other tools, social media tools that are being used for communities of practice and for CPD. Um, what did we learn about Facebook communities in this year's audit? So again, we found that um, there's more groups using Facebook groups, um, so opposed to a, a, just a Facebook page where you might be sharing mm -hmm. sort of information out. Uh, so most of those are kind of closed groups. And um, although we've removed uh, four of the original ones from the audit, so three of those were run by SET and one was an AP Connect group, uh, the removal of those um, you know, relates to the kind of uh, funding for certainly for the AP Connect group. But we've so we've seen that there's a kind of massive growth in terms of the numbers using that uh, platform. And actually, some of the groups are, are very large, but also mm -hmm. we have a very small ones. So um, the Teach Hall UK group is only has 10 members, um, whereas, you know, the Microsoft Education um, group it's got 11,317. So massively different and, and showing the two sides really of the audit data in terms of a very big group run by um, an organization and a very small group run by a group of practitioners who are teaching horticulture in further education. I, I'm always um, fascinated by, you know, how changes in communities of practice reflect changes in sector funding. Um, so, you know, la last year, obviously, we um, we saw big departures of sort of really large communities and groups um, as business models were changing, with the TES groups being all closed down and their forums um, closing. And this year, we've seen, you know, some of the like the AP Connect group and some of the set groups to be closing. So it is a real reminder how much turmoil there is in the sector and how much things are changing for practitioners. And that is really one of the questions we're going to put to you later um, in our Twitter chat when you join the conversation. So we're going to want to discuss and learn more from you here in the audience. Um, what are the motivators and barriers for you to connect with and engage with different communities of practice? Um, and what really do you look for in a community of practice? Um, hopefully we can help find um, right ways to connect for you if you haven't already started to. So there's help at hand if you don't know where to start at all. Um, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into how the conversation is growing. So Emma, tell us a little bit about um, the Amplify FE hashtag. So it's grown massively in popularity over the last uh, year or so. Uh, so in total, since uh, October 2020, we've had 25,893 tweets using that <laughs> hashtag, which is just, you know, to think of that from where we started is just amazing. And the hashtag is now being used across Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And uh, during the audit, we took a snapshot of um, uh, how the hashtag was being used over a period of time in relation to other hashtags as well. So we, we know that um, hashtags that are, are using Amplify FE as well as Joy FE, UK FE chat, um, EdTech, teacher training, CPD, community. So all things that we want to be associated with, our hashtag is actually being used in, in those conversations. So it's really um, exciting to see that growth. 
Yeah, absolutely. I will remember, um, you know, when the hashtag first started to exist. And I wanted to zoom in on this image because that's one of the um, the prints of a visualization of the conversation. Um, and if you head over to the Amplify FE website, um, you can yourself explore um, this visual in an interactive simulation and see how the conversation is developing. Um, but what I think is particularly fascinating and why this graph is so dense with so many user handles and so many connections, um, particularly if you focus in the center where there's sort of just gray lines intersecting, um, is because it isn't a, a broadcast hashtag. It's not where people are just uh, following messages or information. It's really where a whole conversation has been evolving for over two years now. And I don't know, Emma, but when I look at that, I can kind of see a wonderful, messy, wibbly wobbly ball of connections and conversation happening. Um, what do you think? Absolutely, I just think it really captures how and a you know a community of practice and a network really works that there are some key, big key players in there and they're having conversations and connecting with all of these other um handles so it it really is just fascinating and if you get two minutes to just go and have a look you'll you'll be able to kind of dig into that data and see how it's um growing and expanding yeah absolutely um so Talking a little bit more about how the network is growing, um, I know that we do audit a large number of different hashtags and conversations, and I'm sure there are many people in the audience today who really don't know where to start, <laughs> you know, who may be um, not that familiar with Twitter or just don't know where the conversation is happening that they're looking for. So, Emma, what what kind of can you offer as a waypoint? Uh, what are kind of good hashtags to start the conversation with and maybe to check out when you're completely new? Uh, so I think, you know, when you're starting out, you just want to uh, connect with uh, different practitioners. So UK FE chat is always a really good starting point in terms mm -hmm. of it's uh, a Twitter chat run once a week. So it's a very easy way in and you can just observe that. Obviously using our hashtag will get you connected with different people. If you've got an interest in research, then have a look at the FE Research Meet hashtag. If you're um, joining us from higher education, then you may want to have a look at the LTHE chat, um, you know, exploring different subjects. So if you are an English professional or a maths professional, then English FE, maths FE, uh, they're always good options. Uh, so the the hashtags that we've got on the screen in front of us at the moment are basically ones that have been added to our map. And um, I would encourage you that if you get an opportunity, if there's something that you think we should be aware of that hasn't been added yet, then um, add your hashtag to the map because it's forever growing and expanding. And um, yeah, just come and explore some of the, the hashtags that have been shared because they are being shared by communities that want to connect with other practitioners. So um, do explore that further. Fantastic. And yeah, that's one of the things I guess we um, we ought to mention as well. Um, there is opportunities to add yourself to the map. So as you can see, our um, collection is growing and we try and signpost different conversations um, for different subject areas and for areas of interest. But if there's something we're missing or maybe you have a network or community that you've discovered or you've started, um, do let us know and, um, and we can add you to the map, literally. <laughs> um, we want to make sure that the findings from our communities of practice sector audit are useful to you. They are made for our community and individual practitioners can use our findings to help find support and build personal learning networks. You can find communities of practice on a variety of different platforms, as we've just had a look at, including email, newsletters, um, but also Facebook group, LinkedIn groups, um, all social media groups. And no matter what you're interested in, um, there should be a community or conversation um, where you can start, find the resources and join that conversation. 
if you are a provider and you're looking to either engage with communities of practice um, in order to explore market research, maybe test, get teachers input, um, or look to just learn from and with teachers and practitioners and trainers, um, you can connect via our network and join the community space. Um, but you can also use the data from the audit, um, such as this one, and our research report and insights reports to help baseline your provision. We're talking to teachers and practitioners and experts across the sector each year and publish our research findings openly for you to use. Um, data from our audit can also help inform strategy and policy, um, provides an up-to-date overview of practice as well as, really crucial, the gaps in the provision. And some of the changes in funding that we were talking about earlier are causing gaps in provision and they are causing a lot of changes in the sector, which I know many of us are very familiar with. This is a long established problem, but this audit data gives us an opportunity to track how these changes are affecting practice and how the conversation and how practice is changing. Now, there is more than hashtags and mailing lists. There are also a lot of resources and activities in the Amplify FE community space. And Emma, tell us more about the space and how we can get involved. So, um, yeah, we would love to get you involved in the community space. So it's a place to share and learn from each other, increasing access to learning technology expertise digital pedagogy and professional development opportunities. And we'll talk and expand on that in a minute. Um, we champion the use of accessible, inclusive learning technology, and we're trying to engage with FE groups and communities of practice and researchers. So working really across the whole of the further education and training sector in its widest terms. And we want to amplify the voices of professionals in strategic developments across the sector. It's all about connection. It's not at all about competition. So it really is like come and join with your community of practice and let us help to spread the, the good work that's going on. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a real call to action. And um, I know that you have more to share, but I just want to emphasize that I think one of the key reasons um, why we exist and why we do the work that we do is that there is a real lack of connection um, between different groups, between these little silos of expertise and insight. Um, and with the current pressures that are on everyone in the FE and vocational education sector, we really want to make sure that if you do need help, if you are looking for know-how and expertise, you can go, you know where to find it and you can connect with the people who can help. So how can we get involved and connect, Emma? So we run lots of different um, opportunities to get involved, including twice termly meetings where we run a spotlight on a particular practitioner. So if you want to come and share or talk through an idea with uh, a friendly group of people, then, you know, this is an ideal spot. But equally, if you're a project and you want to come and talk and just get a feel for some feedback from um, FE practitioners, then again, it, it's an opportunity for you to get involved. Um, we offer a blog, so if, you know, presenting and talking on camera is not your thing, then we, we can do that with you. Um, we do a podcast as well. And um, if you want to run a webinar, so if you've got 20 minutes of something that you would like to share in terms of what your community is doing or that you want to demonstrate something that you've been using in your own teaching practice or your project and you want to talk about uh, what your um project is working on and how it how it can help people then that's an opportunity and and as you know that um later today we're going to be doing a twitter chat so we get involved with these as well and just to signpost that our next uh, community space meeting date is the 2nd of december so if you're available then we're more than welcome you to attend 
Excellent. Well, we hope to see many of you there. And I'm really looking forward to um, what's in store for next year as well. And talking of what's next, um, mentioned that we have a lot more findings to share with you. And obviously, in half an hour and in such a setting, we aren't able to share with you the full data and all the really rich insights that come from the report. This is only the first of um, a number of resources and data that we're publishing. So do head over to our website to find out more and get the report and also look forward to the next number of resources that we are publishing. But before we say goodbye, we really want to invite you to, in about five minutes, join our conversation on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. And um, I'm going to let Emma explain how to join. Yes. So hop on over to Twitter and then uh, search for the Amplifier Fee hashtag. You'll find that uh, we will have, we'll be posting uh, regular questions. So they'll be going from between 4.30 through to uh, about 5.30. Yeah. And um, yeah, come along, join in, use the hashtag when you put your reply in and uh, be part of the conversation. We really hope that you join us and tell us what your questions are about how communities of practice are developing in FE and vocational education, and also share with us your perspective. So come and join us using the hashtag AmplifyFV on Twitter. And if you'd like to download this first report from the sector audit, and if you'd like to learn more about the resources and research, um, please head over to amplifyv.alt.ac.uk forward slash audit and explore from there. Um, I'm afraid we're nearly out of time, Emma, and I've really enjoyed um, this session here at the week of VocTech. Any final comments for you? Just to say, it's been wonderful to have the opportunity to share this and looking forward to seeing all the other things that are being shared in the week of Voctec 2. And see you on Twitter. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here, Emma. Well, on behalf of everyone um, at Amplifier V and the Association for Learning Technology, I just wanted to say a big thank you for you all for joining us here at the week of Voctec. And we really look forward to seeing you um, just in about five minutes here. Um, joining the conversation. So for now, it's goodbye from Emma and goodbye from me. Thank you very much. <laughs>